hey gang, this is a topic that hits close to home for me. And I've given a lot of thought to it over the years since I first backed this. I don't think I've talked a lot about my in-game goals before, but because I'm old, the idea of just endlessly grinding day after day after day, well, I do that for my real job. So it's not super appealing or rewarding for me to do the same for my amusement. So I want to hit the ground running, sitting on the bridge of my Banu Merchantman. My goal is not to start out in Aurora and grind for three years of my free time until I can get an ultra rare alien ship in game. My goals are to be part of a fleet traveling system to system on day one. And that's where my dream of what to do in this game are largely focused. The grind and building up to something is certainly a rewarding aspect of some games, but the purported gameplay options in Star Citizen are so broad that the grind is only one aspect of the game that can be appealing. For example, another of my in-game goals is to have a crew on my Banu Merchantman that's made up of one of each of the alien races. I just think that that would be super cool to have a Tavara and a Gion, a Banu, and a uh, Van Duel. I mean, it sounds like the start to a bad joke, but is that even attainable? I mean, having Van Duel crew suggests that probably not, but I'm going to try to do it anyway, just because that sounds more fun to me than just grinding up for a ship. So where am I going on this? Let's focus in on that idea of NPC crews, because I feel it's kind of a missing piece that tons of people are completely relying on, but don't really know what CIG's plans are or what they've said in the past. And granted, the information on this is really spotty and mostly far out of date, but I have some thoughts on where they're going and not going. So after that long lead in, let's get this. Let's start in the beginning of the project, specifically with this article and design doc that was rolled out in the very early days of the project, back when they used to show us design documents. This one goes back to 2013. The part that applies here is this specific paragraph. Many of Star Citizen ships, such as the Freelancer or Constellation, feature positions for multiple crewmen. Players will always be able to hire NPC crewmen in the game, contracting computer-controlled crews to help man turrets, run consoles, and fly escort. That's important. If you would like the option of customizing your crew, you can create your own NPCs by using a game character slot. You will go through the same character creation process as your player, but will then have the option of handing off control to an AI. As an additional bonus, friends can drop in to take over these crewmen themselves and to help man your spacecraft when available. The general thought in CIG's answer has been, if we haven't given you an update on a subject or a design document, then what we said before still applies. But is this still realistic in this case? Take all of this with a grain of salt, but here's the summary. And there's links to this article in the uh, down below bits. Effectively, the idea back in 2013 was that people with multiple game packs could use the extras as a type of loyalist NPC. While it was vague, the idea was that you might even have some control over their advancement, and they would likely be more loyal than some NPC you just handled via purchasing them through the game or hiring them out of hand. You could even use one of these game pack NPCs as your next of kin, effectively hopping around the issue of losing half your rep when your character finally gave in to the death of the spaceman mechanic. I don't have the numbers, but I can guess there's no small number of people from those early days, or at least those with the bigger ships, that snagged a handful or more of game packages specifically to make these game pack NPCs. The problem is that, since that 2013 design doc CIG has gone real dark about providing new information about NPCs and NPC crew, not only about the special game pack NPCs, but about any NPCs you could have as crew or how they would operate. We have received some information about NPCs since then. So let's go ahead and take a stroll through some of these videos. Thank you guys for uh, all your patience and uh, support. All right, first question is from Rex Blackthorn, who asks, what is the state of the MPC crew AI? 
Will we be able to throw a few MPC into our multi-crew ships when Arena Commander 2.0 goes live, or is that something that will come in the future? So that will definitely come in the future. Um, in Tony's um, uh, sort of outline of what we've been doing on the sort of persistent social slash persistent universe, he outlines when we're going to bring AI in to sort of the kind of planet side environments um, with a sort of subsumption, which is this uh, sort of higher level AI system that we have that uh, sort of runs the daily lives of the AI and allows them to sort of, you know, get up in the morning, go do their job, go get lunch somewhere, go back to their job, then go home, go to sleep, etc. Um, and so some assumption um, and a few other basic AI things uh, need to be finished off um, in, so we can sort of have it run universally uh, around the place so it can work inside zones, inside ships flying. Uh, so that's not going to be for the very first release of multi-crew, uh, but it will hopefully be um, you know, a few releases after that. So we'll definitely have AI uh, going about their daily lives uh, in the universe or in sort of the multi-crew sort of test large world map. Um, you know, not too hopefully far after multi-crew and we'll definitely have AI that you will encounter even with the, re the release of multi-crew. So there will be PVE opportunities as well as sort of PVP opportunities in this sort of big sandbox map that we're going to give you guys. So uh, there'll be a lot to do but um, you know, having actual specific crew that can work on your ship uh, will not be part of that initial release. That'll be sort of a longer term thing. Um, so there you go. Over the past few years, a lot of us have accumulated a number of large multi-crew ships. Can you give us an update on your vision for NPC crews and what limitations, if any, we are likely to see? Uh, well, you're definitely going to uh, you know, uh, need to have NPCs uh, for some of the larger ships because they're big. And uh, it probably will not be a case that you'll be able to get enough of your friends to, to manage a ship with you. I mean, obviously not in a constellation, but when we start to get up to an Idris, you probably would want to have uh, some NPC crew members. Um, they will be running just like AI, the same way we would run AI in Squadron 42 or run AI running a big sort of NPC or AI ship. Um, and, uh, you know, they won't be obviously as, uh, I don't, you know, self-aware as, as a real player would be. Uh, and you know you would have to be more specific in tasking them okay you're now the gunner you need to go this so they won't be sort of thinking ahead the same way that a real person would uh, but you know they'll be they'll fill uh, the various roles um, you know effectively uh, depending on kind of their rating so if you have an experienced crew member then they'll be able to you know be much better at doing some of the jobs than a, a rookie junior one but of course the more experienced folks will cost you some more money to pay because you know none of these NPCs are going to be working for free, so you have to you know pay uh, you know your crew and make sure they're taken care of, um, and so you know they'll be just sort of like hiring folks to to you know help whether it's run the ship you're flying or fly escort with you. Um, that's actually going to be a large part of the about turrets. Matt, how you doing, man? Hey, Jared, what's up? Not much. Uh, Another week, another question about turrets, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep. th this question says, uh, uh, what is the status of us being able to either slave turrets to pilot control, use AI components to operate them, or hire NPCs to man them? Uh, basically, I think they want to know when are we not going to have to have other players uh, in our turrets one mm -hmm. way or the other. So an exact timeline, that's something that, that we can't really give right now because all things with iteration. Uh, the, the biggest roadblock actually with any of that is getting the actual man turret gameplay into a really good spot first. So, uh, I mean, we've put these cool turrets on a number of our ships. We, we've got a lot of gameplay plans for making multi-crew matter, uh, e even if it is just like a hired NPC, even compared to anything like a, a slaving rig or an AI blade. So. It's, it's getting that man turret gameplay where it needs to be first and then start giving the other options to be like, hey, you don't have to have all your friends online all the time, so here are these other options that, that you can you know, triage things down with. But it's, it's making sure that the core experience is fun before we start adding those in because otherwise it'd probably just short circuit that whole experience. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you know, we, we want we want as many people in the turrets as possible now. That's how we're yeah. going to get the feedback we need. That's how we're going to get the metrics we need and stuff like that. So exactly. to, to automate them right now, this very moment would actually undercut our efforts in making them end uh, a turret gameplay uh, better. Exactly. Yep. Oh, thank you. Sure thing. Yep.
Since these videos rolled out, we've received very little word about NPCs and how they'll function, or at least how they'll function as crew. And it sounds like all NPCs, these quanta, will be broken down into two broad categories from Tony Z, quanta and virtual AI. So quanta are kind of a background AI governed by the probability volume set up by quantum, which is the overarching system that governs the AI and the verse and sort of the underlying economy. They don't really have stats and they're the rough equivalent of a set of, call it generalized bullet points. A quick sketch AI that gives it a real basic behavior and a very small set of rules. Really, we don't need to worry about Quanta for this discussion because they're mostly a background AI tool that allows Quantum, the underlying economic system, to get all its numbers for the economy and to generate encounters or even events. So you might be wondering why I've been running Squadron 42 footage in the background this whole time. Well, Squadron 42 is a single player game. So every single other character that you're seeing and interacting with, all the people moving around the ships, so the people running the other fighters and the other ships in the game, all of them are NPCs. That seems like the most obvious statement of all time, but think about it from this perspective. Squadron 42, if nothing else, is a test bed for us eventually getting NPCs that will crew our own ships in the verse. The fact that CIG has gone all in on NPCs, the fact that they aren't just window dressing sitting in front of a screen that's purely visual, but doesn't actually do anything in game, but are actually doing stuff that is actually controlling the ship is mind numbing. While that kind of detail is pointless dev time suck, in a purely single player game like Squadron 42, it definitely lays the groundwork for the PU. So if all works as intended, the NPC crews in the PU should be pretty impressive. And yeah, that if and that should are carrying a lot of weight, but we'll have to wait and see how it turns out. Like I said in this vid in the up above parts there, for me anyways, 2023 is really kind of a show me year. For years, CIG has been saying that server tech was the blocker for why NPCs weren't acting the way they should, like they have in all of the demos that CIG has been showing us of NPC actions in Squadron 42. I totally buy that, just seeing how server performance has such an impact on NPCs in the game right now, but now that server tech is coming in, I feel like this should be the year when we start seeing dramatic improvements to how the NPCs act. Maybe not NPC crews yet, but at least acting more naturally and not just standing on chairs. I've said this before and I'll probably never quit this game unless the whole thing goes belly up. But if I don't feel like the game has turned some significant corner this year, I'll probably take a step back. That said, PES was a really huge step, and some of the promises that have been sitting out there for a while that have reached meme status are starting to see daylight. So I'll be the first to admit that 318 was really rough. 319 was also rough, but slightly better. The NPCs are acting a hair more naturally on occasion, at least when the servers aren't totally shitting the bed. So after this long lead in, what do I expect from NPC crews? Do I think all people will be running Krakens and whole fleets with nothing but NPCs? So basically running them solo with just themselves and their army of NPCs. Probably not to the second one. Like most of these, the following is just my guesses based on what I've seen so far in this project and what I've pulled from various shows and CIG articles over the years. Even so, it's just my opinion, like all of my videos are. First, CR is on the record as not wanting NPCs to dominate. If a human can do a job, the human should be the obviously better choice. Given that the current edition of NPCs stand on chairs, or calmly stand in lines as they're being shot at, I think we can all agree with that in the current state of the game. But this likely won't always be the case. I think most of us have landed on a brand new server, one that isn't overtaxed and about to 30k, and the experience is quite a bit different. 
CIG even had to make their NPCs a little less accurate in the most recent patch so they wouldn't be ganking players with headshots. That's kind of heartening for those of us looking to make these NPCs crew someday. So let's go with the theory that one day, hopefully not one day in the far distant future, we see these NPCs that can actually do all the things. Of course, an NPC can be programmed, so it's demonstrably better than a human in every single way. It's a program within the program. It can flat out cheat if it wants to. But let's put that aside. Just from what CR said, he wants NPCs to be the background. Even a competent human player should be generally better than an NPC at a task. But we could also say that an NPC will probably be better than nothing. There will come a time in this game where all those extra seats in your ship will matter. Given all we got, which admittedly isn't a whole lot, I'm going to take Chris on his word that NPC crews will be a thing mainly because they have to be a thing. There's just not enough players that want to be crew for more than a one-off to run these ships. So NPC crews will be a thing. If we take that as a given, and it's admittedly not actually a given, how would NPC crew be balanced out? I think it'll be balanced out with cost. To get an NPC working on your ship, you're going to have to get this, pay them. You're going to have to treat them well. You're going to have to have amenities on your ship to draw in the better prospects. You can have a cheap NPC who's bad at their job according to the virtual AI stats they're given, but it's still going to be up to you to be the human in the room and generate enough profit to both run the ship as well as pay your NPC or NPCs, no matter how bad they are at their job. The better the NPC or how good their virtual AI stats are is likely going to determine how much they cost and you'll be under that much more pressure to make greater profits to be able to afford them. Really, that seems like the best deal, kind of an in-game reward and advancement ramp, since Star Citizen doesn't have an actual skill tree. A player with great NPCs on their big-ass ship is clearly doing well enough to afford said great NPCs. Then you start getting into game balance issues, though. As someone who's been playing for a long time, even if they're mediocre, will still have more funds to hire rock star NPCs than some player that's just starting out. Then you're kind of back to filling those seats with players. The ultimate crew will be players who know what they're doing, which might be the point. You won't necessarily have to pay fellow players if you're all working towards a common goal. So the basic NPCs will be balanced out by their skill level and how much overhead they'll end up costing you. You want the competent NPC crew? You'll have to pay for them. And more than that, you'll have to take riskier, higher paying jobs to justify the cost. You might have to kit out your ship with superfluous things just to keep those crew members happy. But where does that leave us with those game pack NPCs? And yeah, that's kind of the rub. Well, it's a rub if you were an early backer who gobbled up a bunch of game packs for that purpose anyways. So, uh, just me? Well, okay then. The real question is how much water does that original design dock hold? Will we still be able to Agent Smith into a friend's game pack NPC? What happens if you can't pay a game pack NPC? Will they work for free? Obviously, the questions on the game pack NPCs are a little more up in the air and add a level of complexity that CIG might not want to tackle anytime soon. There are some things that are pretty easy to figure out. If an NPC dies, that's probably it for them, and you'll need to hire another NPC to replace them. It's likely that at least some of these virtual AIs will even be able to improve their stats over time. So losing one might hurt in that sense. Or you might have to let one go, in other words, fire them or let them quit, because you can no longer afford the price their new skill level demands. NPC crew directly on your own ship really isn't in question. CIG's never really varied on their idea that NPC crew will be a thing and, with Squadron 42 also being a thing, they'll at least be capable of running a ship. Maybe not as well as a person, but well enough. The better question is, what happens when that ship can carry other ships? Like an Andromeda, for example. The Andromeda has a Merlin as a snub. Can you hire an NPC that's able to pilot that snub? 
This is where it starts to get pretty complex, even with the basic NPCs. Is a Merlin on an Andromeda that different from, say, a Buccaneer on a Kraken? Where's the line going to be drawn? And that's the question we don't have an answer to. For my own plans right now, I don't have plans for NPCs beyond the crew on the physical ship I'm on, and I don't plan on commanding that ship solo as it is. I'm hoping for a crew of around two to three people in addition to myself, and then fill in the gaps with NPCs as needed, with maybe a couple in reserve if someone can't drop in for a game session, say. For the other ships I own, as I've said a few times, my plan is to captain and control my own BMM, but the other ships in my fleet are earmarked for other people, other human beings, to captain and crew. I don't plan on trying to run a fleet of NPCs because I don't think CR would ever allow that. In fact, he said things that directly contradict that idea. That doesn't mean those people that are captaining my ships couldn't fill out their ships on loan from the carnival with NPC crews of their own, but I wouldn't be controlling a vast fleet solo. Unfortunately, it sounds like some people are thinking they'll be able to do exactly that, and I think they're in for a lot of disappointment. Then again, maybe I'm wrong. So what do you think? Where do you think NPC crews are headed? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know in the down below parts, down in the comments. For right now, that's all I've got. I do have a lot more thoughts on this, and I might do another one of these eventually, but that's all I got for now. See me next time.